Are you ready? Dude. Oh, Come you on, are ready. Music is my life. I'm Brian Kluger, and we have an excellent episode today. I've got a legendary, a world heavyweight champion of film, music, and the guitar, Mr. Bill Mosley. Welcome to the show. Hey, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be talking about all sorts of fun things, including your brand new film, Prisoners of the Ghost Land. But first, I've got to ask, where did it all begin for you in film and music? Was it something you heard on the radio? Was it something you watched on an old TV? Where, where did it all begin? All of it? Uh, well, you know, it began in uh, my mother's womb. <laughs> <laughs> oh! When uh, when I was supposed to be born on uh, I was I was uh, scheduled to be born on uh, Halloween, October thirty first, and uh, being the contrary sort that I am, I stayed in until November eleventh. So I was a forty week baby, and uh, I think it probably all started there. I, I came out with a shock of black hair and blue eyes. Neither of my parents had blue eyes, by the way, and I'm a left-handed. So I think that's probably, those were all of the, you know, the ingredients that created what you see before you. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're November 11th. I'm November 9th. So all right, kind of, Scorpio. You know, yeah, Scorpio all the way. And my, my girl from my old girlfriend, Tish the Dish, was November 9th. So I got a, I got a soft spot in my heart for it. They call her Trish the Dish. Nobody calls me that. And so you have like conjured up some of the most memorable and best characters of all times throughout all of your movies. There's no fucking ice cream in your fucking future. Is there some sort of recipe for this other than maybe being born uh, November 11th that's supposed to be on Halloween? Was there a recipe for just having these the, the best delivery the best characters and the most memorable lines in films like you you have that that thing <laughs> that's just amazing well you know i think luck plays <laughs> plays a big part in it uh but you know i come from a, uh, a, a, a you know an artistic family however repressed i'm from the north of illinois uh my dad was uh, an executive in a company that made tank cars for railroads uh, my mom uh, was a housewife, and yet they were both very artistic. So there was a lot of singing in the car and uh, forced piano lessons, which I did not like and finally found my instrument uh, in seventh grade. It was the bongos. Uh, so I was more of a percussionist. Um, that ended up leading to uh, my brothers and I had a band called the Mosley Brothers. Um, I acted in school and school plays. Uh, I think that was kind of just, those were kind of the, the ingredients that, uh, you know, that made me, I guess, less, less self-conscious, more comfortable in front of cameras and audiences. Uh, so that was a big part of it. Uh, I was an English major in college. So, you know, I, I, I can think pretty quickly in the English language and, uh, you know, and I have uh, good diction for the most part. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I don't know. Well, oh, wait, what was it uh, like? Is, if I'm correct, you went to Yale, correct? Yeah. That English major at Yale, what was like the best thing you read and uh, <laughs> at Yale? You know, there were two things. One was uh, the, the Divine Comedy class with John Frichero. Uh -huh. uh, I was really big on Dante. I love the Divine Comedy. I really liked the Inferno. I didn't really care too much for Paradiso or Purgatorio, but the Inferno I really loved a lot. Um, and then also my favorite book is Moby Dick. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, I got a chance to uh, take a, a tragic hero class, uh, which started with Job and included, obviously, uh, you know, Ahab. And so uh, all of that stuff just, you know, helped to percolate this brain. Um, I was also big on um, science for the non-scientists. So when I got out of college, one of the things that I did was I, I interviewed scientists for a magazine called Omni. And uh, so I liked interviewing, I liked, you know, certainly writing and wrote a bunch of stories and articles. So I was a, a freelance writer before I got my big break and um, uh, got into the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre part two. 
and it, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not history, but it's stuff. It's like legend. It's all of these movies you've done is, you know, are so incredible. And so I've got to talk about this new film of yours, Prisoners of the Ghost Land, uh, directed by the impressive uh, Sion Sono, and with an amazing and remarkable cast, including you as the governor, which... Well, I think you get the idea, son. Godspeed. Like I said earlier, these characters you make are so memorable, including this one. Like, I want to go as Halloween as the governor. I want the red leather gloves. I want the whole white. The red leather gloves, that is the key. That It was the key. So talk to me a little bit about coming aboard this film, getting in costume and getting fully in character. It had to be the gloves and the hat, right? Uh, it was really the gloves, I got to say. Um, I got into this because I'm friends with uh, uh, the co-writer and, and one of the, the producers, uh, Reza Sixto Sapai. And uh, Reza, uh, you know, we're pals, we're you know, social pals. And I invited him to come to a screening of uh, actually the premiere of uh, Three from Hell, the latest, uh, the Rob Zombie, the, the third in the trilogy, including you know, House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. And, uh, and he saw Otis, you know, now 14 years older and uh, with a full beard. And uh, I guess maybe he thought in his head, he was already thinking about Prisoners of the Ghost Land. It had been greenlit. And, um, and so I think he was thinking about me as the governor. I think, he, I think that from what I gathered, they ran it by uh, Sion, and uh, I like to call him Scion, but you know, I'm from the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> I don't say milk, I say milk, but milk, Scion, yes. you know, Sion. And uh, anyway, he was a big fan of uh, Otis, as it turns out. So he had seen the Rob Zombie movies and, you know, like me in those. So he was, uh, he was, you know, he was two thumbs up for me to play the governor. Uh, one of the first things I got when I had gotten the part was I got a list of 40 measurements that they wanted from me. Uh, not just, you know, waist and neck and shoe size and hat size, but, you know, gloves and wrist and, you know, all kinds of different measurements. Um, and so I, I knew they were going to cook up something very special. Um, I, I certainly read the script a bunch of times. I knew who the governor was, but I hadn't really, you know, I hadn't really gotten, you know, clicked with the governor until I did the costume fitting in Japan uh, with Scion. That was, I met Scion in the wardrobe room. I pulled on the costume, you know, the suit, the amazing hat, everything was in place. And he was looking at me and he was, you know, nodding his approval, but still it wasn't quite, I hadn't really made that final click until they brought out those red gloves. <laughs> And I put the gloves on and then I went, ah, this is who I am. And as soon as I did that, uh, Sion looked at me and he went, governor. And I was like, yes, I gotcha. I'm, you know, this lily white, everything's cool. I'm the governor, I'm the man. And this is the blood on my hands. And as oh. soon as I got that, I realized, okay, that's what he's, that's what he wants from the governor. And, um, you know, a lot, not long after the voice came to the voice of kind of Colonel Sanders, who's very big in Japan, uh, by the way. And um, and uh, I kind of threw in a little bit of a foghorn leghorn from, uh, you know, the cartoons. Hey, boy, I'll tell you. Went right past you. You got to keep. I say you got to keep on your toes. You know, he's always, you know, the big old rooster and the little chicken. Yeah, hawk. yeah I'll, I'll say you, I'll say you made a right choice. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of that's kind of cooked in with the red gloves man as soon as I got those red gloves you know it all fell into place well I think it's an interesting talking about you know the costume but or the fashion in film and your characters you know starting from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 on all have had this excellent fashion sense to them um and so can you talk a little bit about like the relationship with fashion and yourself in the movies and how big of a part that plays? I'll tell you a story about Chop Top. Hurry up, the face! hurry up, get that bitch! Um, you know, of course, Chop Top is a hippie with a haircut. You know, that was the funny, one of my funny buttons on my vest. 
Uh, but, um, you know, and I, you know, I had, so I had the bell bottom pants, I had the tie dye purple shirt, I had a leather vest, had some, you know, some necklaces and some bracelets. And um, at the end of our shoot, uh, Karen Hooper, uh, Toby, at the time, Toby's wife and the, and the you know, the, the wardrobe person, um, knocked on my door the day that we wrapped. She knocked on my trailer door and, uh, you know, I opened up and there she was and she had this whole costume with my sneakers and uh, it's all in a cardboard box. And she said, uh, here, this is for you. And I took a look at it and I said, you know, I, I'd never wear any of this stuff. So I, you know, I, I turned her down, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, you know, which I was regretting for a while. But, uh, you know, fortunately, years later, uh, I was given the suit again. And this time I, you know, took it. So I have the chop top wardrobe. Um, uh, Otis, I don't really know if Otis is really that snazzy a dresser. So, uh, you know, I certainly have some of the Otis wardrobe, but it's like ragged t-shirts with, with nasty sayings on them. And <laughs> so I don't know if Otis is really the, a, quite a fashion plate until he dresses up in Mr. Willis's skin. It's all true. The boogeyman is real and you found him. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, the real fashionista was uh, Luigi Largo. And the, uh, for Repo, the genetic opera, there was an amazing uh, two sisters that were the amazing uh, wardrobe people. And they cut every, all of my Luigi suits were cut to, cut to me and, and it really looked great. And I, I do have those as well. So uh, Mayor Buckman and, uh, you know, <laughs> 2001 <laughs> Maniacs. Yes. I still, I have Mayor Buckman's suit. It wasn't, you know, a total fashion plate, but I've, I've got it. But that is, they're all, they're all of these iconic fashion uh, yes. suits and costumes. It's so great. And with Prisoners of the Ghostland, it's elevated. And I love that Prisoners of the Ghostland, you know, mixes Mad Max with the greatest movie to have ever lived, which you were in which is Army of Darkness. Like I get Army of Darkness right. from Prisoners of the Ghostland. Absolutely. And so I love that element to it. And so I'm gonna leave you with this because I wanna talk about Buckethead. I wanna talk about corn bugs, but that'll be for another time. Um, but my question for you is, since you're a huge fan and purveyor of cinema, are there any certain scenes in films that have always stuck with you? Like when you, like, you wake up and you say like, oh fuck, this is the scene I'm thinking about. This inspires me to go out and work. None that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, uh, I can't think of anything offhand. I mean, you know, certainly, uh, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is Carnival of Souls. Okay. You know, yes. Uh, that filmed in Lawrence, Kansas. Filmed in Lawrence, Kansas, and in the at the Great Salt Lake at the Salt Air Pavilion before it burned down for the second time. Right. Uh, right. But Lawrence, Kansas. That's right, because the the two writers uh, were you know from from KC. I mean uh, from Lawrence. From Lawrence yeah, I, I went to KU, so I immediately oh, right, knew Jayhawk, that. Yeah. Too. Yeah, Jayhawk. So <laughs> I'm going to give you some time to think about that question for the next time we talk. Yes. Yes. And we're going to have I, all I would, the good stuff. <laughs> yes, that sounds good. And in the meantime, uh, let I'll let you know that uh, uh, corn bugs is gone from the charts, but not from the hearts, but I'm still working on uh, Spider Mountain. And okay. I'm actually in the middle of doing a new album with uh, my partner, Ronnie Sharon, whose twin brother Gil uh, drums for Marilyn Manson. And Ronnie and I did put out an album about seven years ago called uh, No Way Down, Spider Mountain is the group. And we're working on a new, uh, a new CD now, so more to come. Oh, I'm all in for the album, oh, yeah, all cool. in for the vinyl, I can't wait. Uh, hope to talk with you very soon, uh, Bill. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk uh, later and have a good rest That's of the day. That's good. My pleasure. And thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate it.